that was really tough, you know? <laughs> that was really tough. Because when somebody kind of slags you for what you are, like, you know, if, like you say, hey, you know, that shirt fucking sucks, I can take it off, right? Do you think that? <laughs> She's like... <laughs> but if somebody kind of nails you for what you are, I mean, you can't, you can't shed your, your sexuality, you can't shed your race or, you know, anything like that. And it's really divisive. And I find, especially in this time of election, it's so easy to divide people, isn't it? I mean, even in this room, there are divisions that are easily exploited. For example, I'm a stand-up comedian, and you poor suckers have jobs that pay. <laughs> but you know, I kind of like to bring things together, and no matter what you think separates you from somebody else, there's always something that'll bring you together. Let's demonstrate. <laughs> and we got some straight guys in this room? We gotta have some straight guys in this room. Come on, raise your hands. <laughs> no, I haven't fucked any of you. They're straight. <laughs> so straight guys. <laughs> Have you fucked any of them? <laughs> well, we may need to probe into this. Or did you already take care of that? <laughs> Guys, it's straight guys. Your greatest fear is marrying a woman. One, two. <laughs> yeah, came right together. So you got some straight women here? Yes. Yeah, well, we know you're straight. <laughs> Straighter than straight. So, you know, straight women, you think that the primary purpose of straight men is to fix cars and dance naked in cages for your amusement. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. <laughs> but yeah, before I go on, let me just say, like, I have nothing against heterosexuals. Like, that's one of my favorite orientations. <laughs> but I don't get this whole straight guy gay fear. Like, straight guy, you shouldn't be afraid of us. You should learn from us. We have much to teach you. Because <laughs> let me tell you. We have helped women put their bras on. <laughs> we have handed them towels and coming out of the shower. We have watched them try on lingerie. So you can make fun of our fashion, love, and show tune playing asses. <laughs> but keep in mind that you are one Hello Dolly soundtrack away from the changing room at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> But you know, I, I kind of really do prefer to focus on the things that sort of bring us together. And I think that one thing that we can all kind of agree on is that we all have these stupid habits that we don't question, we just do. And one that's kind of been on my mind is this habit that we have. We think that other Americans aren't going to quite get what we're saying unless we kind of mime along with our words. <laughs> have you noticed this? You'll be in a coffee shop like this one, perhaps. And you'll see someone be like, oh, you know, I forgot, could I have a spoon? <laughs> like, if you don't do this shit, they're gonna hand you a fucking clock. <laughs> a spoon, ding dong. <laughs> and what if you made different hand gestures? Do you think people wouldn't understand you? And they're like, hey, sneak off and get me a diet coke. <laughs> Ice. <laughs> hey, do, do you have that time? <laughs> time. <laughs> Eastern Standard. <laughs> Another thing that kind of brings us together is text messaging. Well, it, brings, it doesn't bring all of us together because I, I have to tell you, I'm not good at text messaging. I've got one of those cell phones that's old, still has like a rotary dial. So I'm like, hey, hey. And I'm not good at typing with my thumb. So all my texts come out like, running plate, be there, swoon, cue. So did you guys text message? Are you text messaging now? Because I like, can't talk listening to 401k motherfucker. Thank you. Woo!